Euclid's division lemma, more commonly known as the division algorithm, is an extremely important idea that is used in virtually every area of mathematics. We're going to be working with it in integers, but there are versions that work with polynomials, complex numbers, and other abstract domains. The book's proof of the division algorithm is different from most modern treatments. It's very specific to the presentation because it uses the basis representation theorem from the previous chapter. Recall that the basis representation theorem simply states that we can write any positive integer n in any base k in a unique way. We will prove the division algorithm following the book's presentation, but then we'll also give a more intuitive geometric proof. Theorem. For any integers j and k with k greater than 0, there exist unique integers q and r such that j equals q times k plus r, and 0 is less than or equal to r is less than k. All of these values have names. The integer j is called the dividend, k is called the divisor, q is the quotient, and r is the remainder. Incidentally, we implicitly used this theorem in the previous section when we calculated the base 4 representation of 383. In fact, this theorem is just a formalization of every integer division calculation you've done since elementary school. We will work with positive values of j. Notice that if k equals 1, we can trivially identify q and r. So we will assume that k is greater than 1. We will first use the basis representation theorem to write j in the base k. Notice that we can factor out a k from all but the last term. When we do this, we end up with an expression that's in the exact form we need it to be in. We now need to prove that this representation is unique. Suppose we have a second representation of this type. We will write q prime in the base k and then plug it in. Notice that this is a representation of j in the base k. By the basis representation theorem, we know such representations are unique so that this must be the same representation that we started with and this means we can just match up the terms. But after we match up the terms, we see that this means that q and q prime are the same value, and r and r prime are the same value, so that the representation is unique. The j equals zero and j less than zero cases will be left as exercises. When j equals zero, you can easily identify q and r. When j is negative, you will want to apply the division algorithm to the value negative j, which will be positive, and so you can apply the conclusion of the proof we just completed. The geometric proof relies on some basic intuition about the number line. Let k be a positive integer and label all the multiples of k along the number line, capturing both the positive and negative multiples. The integer j must lie somewhere on the number line as well. If it happens to be a multiple of k, then we have j equals q times k plus 0. If not, then j must lie between two multiples of k. We can label them so that qk is on the left and that q plus 1 times k is on the right. We can then define the value of r as the distance between qk and j. Clearly, this is less than k since k is the size of the gap between qk and q plus 1 times k. With this, we can clearly see that j is equal to qk plus r. The division algorithm is an important result that we will be using throughout the rest of this course. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.